Welcome to Electron Online, and for those who are interested in exactly how we calculate the velocity of molecules and how we compare that to the temperature and gravity and so forth, we're going to go into it a little bit more depth. So in our second video on atmospheres, we're going to take a look at the Earth's atmosphere, and we know that the Earth's atmosphere exists in several layers, about four of them. Now, they're not all that different in constitu uh, constituency, but they are different in the temperature gradient. For example, in the surface of the, of the Earth, the temperature is, let's say, a typical 50, 60 degrees Fahrenheit, about 15 degrees centigrade. As you go further up into the atmosphere, into the troposphere, you can see that the temperature declines as you go farther up. Most people are aware of that. You go up into the mountains, high up with an airplane, the air outside is much cooler. But then when we get into the stratosphere, the temperature begins to increase again. And that is due to the energy deposit of the UV radiation that, that uh, deposits energy in the upper stratosphere. And then as you go further up into the mesosphere, the temperature cools down again considerably. And then when we get all the way up in the ionosphere, way up into the highest regions of the atmosphere, you can see that the temperature of the atmosphere goes way up. Now that is simply due to the velocity of the molecules because the incoming X-rays and gamma rays, gamma rays ionizes the atmosphere way up there in the, in the upper regions of the atmosphere. And that causes the molecules to move quite quickly. And so let's take a look now again. Here's our distribution of the velocity of molecules. The vast majority of molecules have a certain, a certain velocity called the RMS, kind of like the average velocity of the uh, molecules in the atmosphere. But you can see that there's a few of them that go quite fast. And typically, the fastest molecules in the atmosphere travel at about six times the velocity of the RMS, or the average velocity of the molecules in the air. And if that six times the average velocity exceeds the escape velocity of that particular planet or moon, then the atmosphere will slowly leak off into space. So here's the equation that we use to find the RMS velocity for a uh, gas molecule in the atmosphere. K is a constant, the Boltzmann's constant. T is the uh, temperature and M is the molecular mass. Now converting that to the Rydberg constant temperature and the molar mass, it's easier to use. So let's go ahead and find the velocity of a typical uh, molecule on the surface of the Earth. And of course, the most typical molecule would be the nitrogen molecule. So the velocity, RMS, of a nitrogen gas molecule, N2, is equal to the square root of three times, and we're going to use this equation. We're going to use the gas constant, so that's 8.315 uh, joules per mole times Kelvin. And then we're going to multiply that times the temperature. Now, typical temperatures, maybe let's say room temperature about 300 Kelvin. So make it easy, we'll call it 300 Kelvin. Divided by the molar mass of nitrogen, which is 0.028 kilograms per mole. And with a calculator, let's find out what the typical speed is of a molecule. And hopefully I have a calculator right here. Yes, I do. And so we have 3 times 8.2. Uh, 315 times 300 divided by 0 0.028 equals, take the square root of that, and it's 517 meters per second, which is quite fast. 517 meters per second. Now, if we multiply that times 6, so if we multiply that times 6, for the very fastest in the atmosphere, that would give me, let's see, times 6, that would be about 3,100 meters per second. That would be well under the escape velocity of the Earth because the escape velocity of the Earth is about 11,000 meters per second, about seven miles per second. So you can see that this is well below the escape velocity. We don't, not, we don't have to really worry about molecules escaping. However, that's not the whole picture because if we go high enough if, into the atmosphere, notice because of the incoming radiation from space, those molecules at the upper regions of the atmosphere, they heat up quite a bit they start taking on very large velocities. So let's say that the temperature up there is 1,000 Kelvin, just to kind of get a feel for it. And also what we find is that there's the, because of the uh, radiation coming in, molecules are being ionized and energy, there's enough energy there to actually break the molecules apart into single atoms, nitrogen atoms, oxygen atoms, hydrogen, and, uh, yeah, and oxygen, because water is hydrogen and oxygen, of course. And so let's see what it would be for a single hydrogen atom. What would be the velocity of, an, of a hydrogen atom that's been knocked loose from its, uh, uh, its companion, maybe an oxygen molecule? And so let's say that the VRMS for a single hydrogen atom would be equal to the square root of 3 
times, still 8.315, that would be joules per mole times Kelvin. Multiply times the temperature, let's say 1,000 Kelvin, and it could get even hotter than that up there, relatively speaking. It's not that you go up there and it's really hot, you go up there and the molecules are moving really fast that then give you a, a, an equivalent very high molecular temperature. And so we divide that by 0 0.001 kilogram per mole for a typical hydrogen atom. Let's say if hydrogen then recombines and turns into a hydrogen molecule, then all you would get here would be 002, and then we're dealing with a hydrogen molecule, so depending upon what we're dealing with. So let's see what we get there. We get 3 times 8.315 times 1,000 divided by 0 0.002, take the square root of that, and now we have an RMS velocity equal to 3,532 meters per second. Still well below the escape speed of the Earth, but now let's multiply times 6. If we multiply that number times 6, we get about 21,000. 21,000 meters per second, which is well over the escape speed for the Earth. So 6 times the average velocity way up there would be quite a bit more than the escape speed of, of the, um, escapes, the escape velocity of the Earth. And so therefore, molecules that are way up there, especially the hydrogen molecules, could potentially take off away from the Earth. Again, it's a very small percentage. The process is very slow. And after the Earth being about 4.5, 4.6 billion years old, we still have the vast majority of the atmosphere. So we personally don't have to worry about our atmosphere leaking off into space. But the smaller planets like Mercury and Mars and all of the moons except for Titan, they have lost their atmosphere. Whatever they had before, it's pretty well gone. Mars still has a little bit of its, at its atmosphere left, but not a lot. So the density of the atmosphere Mar of Mars is only about 0.6% the density of the Earth, and it's continuing to leak off as, as time goes by. So that, that gives you a better feel for the atmosphere on the planets in our solar system and on the moons in our solar system, and why some have atmospheres and why some don't. And that's how we do that.